Hi guys, this is Tracy. Welcome back to Hoosier Redesign. Um, if you're new, please subscribe. Hit that like button if you like what you see. Um, here on Hoosier Redesign, we take odd, maybe odd things, different things. I don't even know why I'm holding this up because we're not using it today. But this is going to be something else. We take things that we find side of the road, Google outlets, given to us, whatever and we turn them into something useful in your home or a beautiful piece of home decor. We take furniture that's been left to the side of the road or bought at Goodwill and we turn it into something really nice for your home. Um, on a budget, you can put it in your home. You can use it as a resale item. Whatever, it's up to you. Um, the sun's gonna keep going in and out. I'm outside in the barn and um, we're gonna do a project. So. You know, you probably hear people cutting grass. You'll hear four-wheelers going down the road. You'll probably hear the goat, the horse, the dogs, something at some point. Um, just give me grace because I'm living my best life out here. <laughs> First thing I'm going to show you is this pot. This cooking pot. Plain cooking pot. You'll have to excuse my face. It is like... 90 something without the humidity added so it's probably in the feels like 100 degrees around here and I'm already sweating enough without putting makeup on my face so if it bothers you I'm sorry find somewhere else to watch this is real stuff here real life real stuff real problems um, hopefully some real solutions <laughs> all right but this flower this pot this cooking pot plain stainless steel cooking pot we are going to transform that into this. Has that a cement look? Like I said, fall flowers because I'm getting ready for fall. Marie Seller and you're always ready for the next thing. The next thing is gonna be fall. All right? So stick around and paint a pot with us. <laughs> All right, so here's our pot. And the first thing that we have already done with it, I've already cleaned it. Um, I used crud cutter and I cleaned the whole pot. I've removed the tags, here's the last tag. This pot costs $2.99 at Goodwill. So it is clean. Might not look like it because there's some rust and ding dings and dents in this pot. But it is clean. It's dry. And then the very next step that I do, because I find it helps me out, is, let me go get it because I left it on the other side of the room. Of course I did. another bottle of it because I used the last one so I had to go buy more. All right the first thing I like to do to ensure that everything sticks especially when it is hot and humid outside is that I am going to use this Dixie Bell Slick Stick. I'm going to paint the entire pot in this, Let's see if we can get down any further. I don't know. We're gonna try. Whoop. All right, right there. As good as I guess as I'm gonna get with this camera setup that I've got. I need a higher tripod or something, or to be able to set it higher. Hmm. Give me a minute, let me see if that can work. All right, so I have turned the pot upside down because I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the bottom as well, even though you won't be able to see it. I'm not gonna do the texture paint on the bottom, but I will paint it the same color without the texture. And less risk of chipping away on that. So this is Slick Stick. 
it helps your paint stick to any slick surface. Um, well, I don't remember if I got the white one or the clear one, but <laughs> whatever. It doesn't matter for me for this project what color it is. Um, I will just coat the whole pot. Oh no! That was not good. <laughs> Apparently I forgot to um, push down the lever. Ha! That's better. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Got to push down the lever. All right, so now it's pushed down. We got a little smooge right there. All right, so the entire pot is gonna get painted in slick stick. Candles. And this is the way I found best to do it. You know, you might find another primer that works just as well or whatever. But for my, I want to say where I'm working out, I'm in the barn. And so it's pretty much like I'm outside. And for the level of heat and humidity that I'm experiencing right now, Slick Stick works the best for me. It might not in all climates. I am not an expert. Dixie Bell, I'm sure, has much better experts that can answer those kind of questions than myself. I'm even coating the handles, like I said, the bottom part first, then I'll flip it over. When we're done, under the top. I need to invest in one of those Lazy Susans. I think that uh, the Ginger Chick Rehab, um, Javon, Javon, she and her husband use Lazy Susans, and I'm always going, I need those. But my thrift stores never have them. They don't even have those big, ugly TV turntables like nothing so I will have to probably invest in one or make one out of like marbles you know because you can make your own <laughs> that's another video all right so I'll come back when this is dry it's wet um, it has to dry and you want to make sure with this the key thing besides using the slick stick for me is to make sure every layer is dry. Oh, I just use a chip brush to do that too, just a cheap chip brush. But you wanna make sure every layer that you're putting on is totally dry before you go on to the next layer. If not, then you're gonna have issues with things not wanting to stick because things were not all the way dry on the previous coats of paint. So that is a huge thing, it has to be dry. Luckily enough, it's so hot right now, this should be completely dry in um, an hour or so. So we'll be back to do the next step. And the next step is gonna be a textured, uh, charcoal-y colored paint. All right, we'll see you back here when we're ready. Okay, for time's sake, I went ahead and flipped it over when it was dry. I painted this side and I painted the inside. And with slick stick. I don't know if, what I'm going to do to that yet. But we'll get there. Um, so to paint the outside. Oh, let me grab a brush here. Let me just use this stipple brush. Um, I have uh, some baking soda on the plate. And we are going to start, I use a several color process. Uh, let's see, I had some paint that I'm trying to get rid of. I know. Uh, we're going to start with this one. Charcoal, Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Okay, I'm 
we'll just kind of put that in about the same amount, equal parts pretty much. Alright. Use a stipple brush. And stir it all together. See if it's a consistency I like. I like it really thick. It thickens more as it sits, of course. But I like to start out with it about this consistency. It's really thick. Okay. I'm going to take our pot. It's already covered in slick stick. Yay. So it's really difficult for me to film, so we're going to do the best we can. Um, and I just pounce it. I want it to be heavily textured. I paint the bottom last. I know everybody else does it first. But when I'm doing this, I like to paint it last. I don't know. It's just something in my mind. I said paint it last. Since I keep putting it on the bottom, and you know, the bottom's going to get a lot of abuse. Tap, tap, tap away with this. And it's this is not quite black. It's a very dark gray. Uh, we're going to tap the whole pot like this. All right, I'm going to have to stand it up to finish it. So, we're going to finish doing the pot and let it dry. And then I'll come back and show you the next steps on this. Okay, this first coat is all the way dry. There is no wetness to it. Stuck on there with the slick stick. Now, I'm going to mix up some more the same exact thing that we just had um mix up more That's what i'm doing the same color the same thing I'm like wow another coat yes because there is something texturally different that we are going to do with this one um i don't use a white wax um, to create my rocky granity, which is what I really try to go for. It's like an old granite or, you know, old cement that I've been sitting around, oxidized and dirty. All right, so we're going to take our pot. And we are going to go, not the whole piece this time, though, just in spots. Just there, and we want to make sure we get all up underneath here, where maybe we didn't yesterday. I'm just putting splotches all over. And you can see where we missed some of the um, pot the day before, which is a really good um, thing with white primer. Usually I would not have used the white slick stick, but... I didn't realize what I grabbed until I'd already opened it and started applying it yesterday. But, you see, now we can tell where we need to go back on it and do some more. And a few places we missed yesterday. Because, if we use the clear or a gray primer, then it may have blended in with the stainless steel that was already here. And we may have spots that we missed. And we want to get as full of a coverage as we can. I mean, we want some of this stuff really thick. But not everywhere on this. We're going splotches, like patches, random patches. We have random patches on here where we're going over it again. Not the whole thing. And I'm going to give it a really rough, uneven look with this coat. Really rough and uneven. And I'm going to go around 
the rim and the handles again as well. The inside will just get, the very center of the inside, we'll just get a regular coat of the, um, let's see, this is what we're using. I know we're all backwards. I'll figure that out someday. <laughs> all right, around the edge. I just put a light coat in here so that way it, it's not distracting. <laughs> When you go to assemble whatever you're gonna put in here I don't know what you're gonna put in here um, my last one I just put some fall flowers in it but we don't have to use it for a flower pot you know that the possibilities are endless but like I said I want some really rough places on here so some of this is just thick but as you see with the slick stick as we're putting it on we're not pulling the other off um, I had that problem the first time I tried to make these and I didn't put slick stick on it. I was just pulling the, the previous layer off, even no matter how long I let it dry. I mean, it was, even if it was really solidly dry, it still was trying to come off. Okay. And that's going to do it for this coat. We're going to have to let this dry one more time, or at least one more time, several more times. But um, like I said, to ensure that our pot is going to stay coated, it has to be dry in between each one. You are dealing with salt and water-soluble paint. Therefore, let it dry. <laughs> All right? All right, we'll be back when this is dry. We'll start on the next layer. All right, here we are back with our pot again. It's all dry, as you can tell. I dropped it and got some. But looky there, I dropped it. and got some markings on it from the wood, the wood shavings. But when I dropped it, the paint did not come off. The slick stick really does a good job. And you can see where I've got this on thicker. All right? Next step I'm gonna do might seem strange to some, okay to others. I'm going to take some polycrylic and seal this in. You'll understand why here in a little bit. Oh, that's paint from my hands. Sorry. <laughs> I have several projects happening here today at one time but isn't that life it looks like we're doing one thing but we're really doing several all right now I'm gonna let this dry and when this is dry we'll be back for the next step all right okay this is dry All right, next step. We're gonna take a light gray paint. I have this one to try to use. Like I said, I'm trying to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And we're just gonna slather it on. sections. So we got this part here. Now we're going to kind of work it like a wax, but we're also going to sand this here in a little bit. So I don't like to use the wax because it gums up the sandpaper. But just wipe it. And since we use slick stick, we can really wipe it. It's not going to come off. You can start to see the texture coming out from the paint underneath. All oh, that good texture we worked for. We're starting to see it now. We're going to do this all the way around the pot.
And here we go again, open it off. You have to ignore next door, that banging noise. That would be the horse. Doing something. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you have to give me a minute. I think the water's full. I'll be back. All right. Sorry about that. I was filling up the horse trough, the water trough over there, and it must have been full. <laughs> All right. So back to this. Just. Still taking it off. But by putting that, this on there, the polycrylic, it acts as a barrier so I can really wipe the light gray without worrying about the dark gray coming off because it is sealed in. I wipe, 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 and then I dab, 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 and then I wipe, wipe, dab, dab. <laughs> There's no method. But you can see all the texture coming out there. All the texture. All right. Do this all the way around the whole pot. This is like one of those things you don't do in one day. You know, it takes several. I just, this is one of those things that I, it's a nice project to have while you're waiting for your other projects to dry. So in between drying times, you're working on other things, you know. I'm doing a nightstand today, finishing up a, vanity so I have several things going on really hit some of those places wet your rag up. I got some water here somewhere. Here we go. Come back with a little water on there. Wiping and dabbing and dabbing and wiping until I like what I'm seeing. And this isn't the final step to show off all that texture. There is still another step. I just like to make sure I have no streak marks right now. So I'm dabbing, making sure nothing is streaked. Maybe I want to take some more stuff off there, but I want to make sure, you know, there's blotchy marks but not really lines and streaks. Okay, now we have to wait for this to dry also. <laughs> but see, we're pulling out all that texture on here. You can start to see it. Okay, you can see where there are dents in the pot as well. <laughs> all right, well, let's let this dry and then we'll come back again. Work on another project in between. Keep busy, stay going. Okay, we're back. 
This is all dry. Now the next step we're going to do to bring out more of the texture even is take a piece of 220 sandpaper. Yeah, it's 220. And we're going to lightly go in circles, just lightly. So you have some of that dark color that we have on the underneath is coming back to the surface. I go in little circles. You see the scratchy sideways motions. Let's see, it's bringing it back more. Do this all over the whole pot. from the first two coats that dark dark paint I don't do too much because I want to be able to feel it too, you know, the texture. It knocks off some of the sharp edges. Let's see, that is nice and yummy. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do. Let's take some clay. Got some here somewhere. And then paper clay. And then paper clay. We're going to use paper clay. That's what I've been using on these paper clay. This worked fine. I did try another air dry clay on a different one that I used, and it worked fine as well. Okay, so I just take this and smoosh it down with my hand. This takes a lot of clay. This is a big pot. Now we're going to cover the whole thing, but we need to make it look chunky on there in some places. So I like to start with the center where I'm going to have the front. I think this is going to be my front right here. So I'll put something here to, that one's a little big, that was smaller, okay, to um, brace this side with. So I like want this push on one side, and I'm just kind of pushing this on. Pushing it on all the way up. And I don't care if my hands are dirty, you know, from other projects that I'm working on as well as this one, you know. And I don't care if it gets colors up in there. It'll just make it look older. Okay, now I got it spread out pretty well. So what do we do with all those fingerprints? I'll show you what I do about those fingerprints. I only save a piece. <laughs> Uh, this is when I do transfers. I save a piece. And I use it to smooth it out. And get rid of all of those fingerprints, palm marks. It is. 
It's got some dirt on there, but there are no textural fingerprints or anything on there, All right? Okay, now on the last one I used the Kindest Regard stamp. On this one, I'm gonna go a little different. Let me see what else came. Sorry about that, guys. My phone overheated and stopped working. So, right back where we were at just a minute ago. We have this first piece of clay on here. And we're going to put something pretty on it. And I'm going to go for floral this time. Because I have a little bit of a thing I think I want to do. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to use the rose twill. And if I can find my scissors, that'll be amazing. I keep losing them. Aha. Uh -huh. I try to cut them apart. Big guy. Look, he's right on the edge. My scissors aren't the greatest they've been through. something a little different with this one. So first I'm going to cut the stamp out. All right, this is how we get this impression on here. And I want it to fall over the edges. So you want something that looked like this was a piece of plaster that's chipped off over time. So you really want to press it in give that impression that it's going off the sides of the clay everywhere. All right? Hmm, the middle didn't do too well, huh? Well, that's fine. I'll put something else in the middle. You can see how it's starting to shape up there. Okay, so I didn't press well enough on the center. So I'm not going to press on the edges this time, just in the center. Okay, so getting some texture going on. All right, texture. Now let's say we need some dragonfly on there because this didn't really get enough um, patterning. It's been sitting for a minute because my phone um, overheated. So this is my mistake. Usually it would be fine. So we're going to put a dragonfly here. Okay. Dragonfly. All right. What else can we put here? Um, let's say they bruises on there. Just whatever you want to put on here. Any of the st um, stamps work like this. Right. So we're just getting some texture on there. Like something was on there for years and has 
since been chipped off. All right, now the top here, on my other one, I had put some molds. Let's see if I can find where I put the molds. Um, I used the swags. This one. Okay. So I'm going to go and put some cornstarch in, and I think I'm going to use this flower one here since I have something that says roses. I'm going to go ahead and use this with rose. Corn starching it up. Just a second. Wrapping it on the table. Alright, so I'm gonna move this back here. Put this here. Get my paper clay back out. Make sure it's a big one. This does take a lot of clay. Um, probably the, you know, if you could do the whole, with these parts at least, use the hot glue method maybe would save you some money. I just don't know. In my mind, I'm thinking as soon as the hot glue gets chipped, the paint's going to come off of it. Um, I don't know if that works or not. Um, you can let me know down below. If you've tried the hot glue method for these molds and how durable is it my mind just keeps saying it can't be very durable but you know I'm frequently wrong all right so I'm just getting working the mold pushing it to the sides I have several molds, but I have to say I like the IOD ones the best because of the little lip. Because that little lip that sticks up makes it so much easier to clean off the edges. That one little design. I like to have the other ones and it just really takes a minute to clean up the edges on them. I have to go through sometimes with a toothpick and find all my edges. On the more intricate ones especially. Okay, but this one is like, there's the edge, it's done. You know, there's the edge, it's done. All the way around, it's done. There's the edge. You found it, you found the lip. And I'm just getting some of the extra clay on top because there is a excess amount here. All right, there's that. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to pull it out. We have this. And between these two here is where I'm going to lay that. And I push it up to the top quite a bit. Now, this step here, this has to dry before we can do anything else to it as well. Um, it's not that a whole lot of stuff going on there. Uh, let's see what else I can put on there. Is there any kind of smaller flower? No. Like I said, usually I don't let this sit, but my phone died. And I my phone got overheated as I was taping that last part. So I'd take it in. Yeah, it's already dried out. Well, it'll give us some texture anyway. We can put extra, we're going to put extra stuff on here. I'll show you that when we're done with it. But we're going to have to let this dry. Um, I usually let it dry overnight. So we'll be back tomorrow. With more of the process on how this is done. All right, good morning, everyone. It's the next morning, and as you can see, this is not all the way dry. Um, it's shaped well. It's halfway there, I think. 
Um, we I'm in Indiana and it has been raining all night and it's not <laughs> beneficial for drying, I guess. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start gluing these down. Sometimes they, this big one sticks well. Yeah, it should be on there because I really pushed it into the texture so it is bonded. But this piece here, no. So we're going to glue it on because I just had this kind of sitting on there to shape it. I use E6000. Okay, we are going to put it up here, center it the best we can, because once it's on there, it's on there. All right, so like that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint this, this shade, the light shade of gray. Or not first thing, but next thing. The next thing. I need to paint. To prop it so it won't roll. You can see it that way. And I'm going to get a brush. Anybody else have brushes like in cups and water laying around? Because I have one, two, three, four. Four. Four <laughs> of these right here next to me. I have to go wash the brushes out in the last couple days. I think I probably have 100 paint brushes here. And I know I have at least one in the house too. You know, you just get started on projects and you keep going and before you know it, it's, you're falling asleep. <laughs> All right, so here's the paint. This is the paint I used on the rest of it. I'm just trying to get rid of all these other jars of paint that I've got around. So I'm just painting it, getting it all up on there. Don't really wanna put a whole bunch on there because you still wanna have all these details even though they didn't turn out the sharpest this time, which I have a remedy for that here in a minute too. So let's see if that works. Well, not now, but, you know, when we're almost done, we can remedy situations, you know. You keep on going until you like it. Keep working on it until you like it. That's what we do around here. I don't worry about too much about if I get it over the edge a little bit. Because we have more steps to go. Like I said, this is definitely a piece that I've been working on on the side. If I had a, I mean, if I wanted to, I have a heat gun right next to me. I could have, um, you know, heated it up, made it go faster. I'm going to do this one too. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to this. I think that's fine. It's got some texture going on on there. But I'll do something else anyway to show you what you can do. How about that? I wasn't going to, but since it's already there and it's all out, I'm going to let you... See what I do. I know a lot of people go ahead and work on these while they're like still very wet. But sometimes I find that I lose some of the definition when I do. Like maybe not this piece here because you know it's just kind of there. But definitely like in the rose swag garland, whatever we want to call it here. And you want to make sure you get the paint on the top as well. And that little crevice on the bottom. Okay, now here we go again. Oop, waiting for this to dry. We're going to wait for this to dry and then we'll be back with the next step. We are very close to the finish line, guys. All right, we're back. This is all dry now. And the next step that we're going to do, let me see the inside, I didn't finish painting it, that's alright, is we're going to take some clear wax, 
put it on the brush and really wax up the clay pieces that we put on. Let me get good and waxy. Getting out all the crevices all around. Wax it up really good. I'm not even going to wipe that off. I'm going to leave it like a little dark wax on there. That's all right. We'll leave that. And then we're going to take the same paint that we used for the base color. And we need a rag. Make sure you have a rag readily available. And I'm going to start the flowers so I can show you what it's going to do. So we just take in the flowers. We like push the paint down inside there. I mean, you could use dark wax if you wanted to. This is just how I do it. I did it with dark wax and I didn't think it got dark enough. more of the white back to the, or the gray, not the white, the gray, back to the surface. But we're still getting all that detail. So we're just going to keep going and do all of this. It's only going to take a few minutes. I like to get in all in here too, all above where the Play applique is at and just really just drowned it. Since we put that clear wax on there, it's acting as a barrier. And then I'm going to take water one more time on this. And really bring out the details with the water. Got that lighter gray color. Same thing to this piece here. Just really go in with the dark gray. I guess it's a charcoal, but it's not a black, it's a dark gray. Now, of course, if you remember, I stamped this when it was halfway dry because my phone said it was overheating, so I had to turn it off and go in the house for a little bit because it is hot out here in Indiana. I'm 
again, don't worry about getting a little bit over the edge. We're going to take care of that with some antiquing wax anyway. Okay, so like this. Take the rag, wipe off most of it. Put some water on your thing if you want to highlight certain areas. I like that little leaf there, so I'm going to take some water and kind of wipe it a little bit so the leaf pops more in the writing down here. Pops. We got some kind of little floral accent going on here. Of course, our dragonfly. But whatever you want to pop out, make sure you. Wipe the tops of the mold and let the bottom stay dark. Okay, so we have this so far. All right, now with this one, I'm gonna go a little extra. And I've not done this before, so you're going along with me on a experimentation ride here. And I have here somewhere in this corner bits and pieces of transfers that are left over and whatnot from different projects. So I figured it's not as big. Not so big. I might try to see what it looks like with some transfers on the side as well. Put my stick. I am always losing my stick. Good thing is, there are lots of other things that work as well. Now, I don't know if this transfer will even stick because it's been sitting out here in the garage. And there's a stick. And uh, it's humid out here. Hopefully. Oh, I think some of it's sticking at least. I mean, if all of it doesn't stick, I'm fine with that. It'll just add to the age aged look of the piece, which I think some of it's going to stick and some of it's not, and like I said, that's fine. I should have taken it in. It's real humid out here. It is not the greatest spot for anything that needs to remain sticky. Transfer these are all from because I just have parts and pieces. Well, that all didn't come off, like I said, that's fine. some more detail along the sides. Okay, now we find something to put over here. Um, let's see, should we do a stamp, a stencil? Ooh. Let's try to do some of these tall stamps. Ink pad. Um, let's see. Put some more ink on my little 
prepared. It's been a hot minute since I inked them. And again, this is how I store my ink. I'm going to say in quotes pad. <laughs> these are Ziploc bags. And then I have these little bags inside the Ziploc bags. But I just pop it open to this. And I take my roller handle. And there I have ink pad on a stick. And then I just roll this out of the way. I just roll my ink onto my surface that I want to stamp. Done. This works amazing for large pieces, large stamps. Um, this one here, oh, wonderful. The Kind Disregard stamp, it went on like a dream, okay? And this is a rolling surface here, so it's not gonna be perfect, but it's lumpy, it's not gonna be perfect anyway. But I don't want it perfect, I want it to look old. So I'm just gonna hold with one while I stamp with the other, and then reverse. got this going on and this going on and this going on I think that's looking really good interesting and now if you really want to make it even more interesting you can actually take like I'll do part of this one here stamp here and we're gonna overlap it I have ideas in my head like you wouldn't believe <laughs> But I have, um, this is black in this one. In this baggie here, I have the China Blue. Um, I just, it works so much easier. It's like a dream. Just roll it out. Some people try to use a brayer and they put it on a plate or something and then they try to use the brayer and spread it. This way it's always loaded. All right, so we're gonna take part of this stamp here and I think I'm gonna stamp it on top of here even. Add a little more interest, like it's coming off the edge. Like that. And I did ink up the whole thing pretty much, so I might as well put some more over here. Just a little bit. I'm not putting the whole stamp because I want it to have its own interest from the relief. Maybe just a little here. Okay, and so we got a little stamp inking action going there. There, there. All right, next. As soon as this dries, we gotta let the ink dry. It has to be totally dry before we start our next step. Because our next step is going to be applying. Mm, that's not it. The antiquing wax. Hmm. I don't even know what's that right now. Like everything else in my life, like I said, I'm going through an unorganized stage in my life, I'm guessing, because I seriously am losing everything. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a plan B. Since I can't find that, we're just going to use paint. That'll work too. Take a brush. Where do I see the antiquing wax? Give me just a second. It's over here by this other project that I've been working on. Okay. All right. This is a brush I usually use for it. All right. I we can't get this too much anymore. You know, I can order online. So I'll start up here since I'm still waiting for some of this ink to dry. It's pretty dry, but you know, I'm just going to tap around the edge, around the edge of this, because we made it look old. Now we're going to try to make it look a little grungy around up in there. Make sure you really get it up in the edge where the, um, 
your mold applique meets the pot. Because, you know, that's where the most dirt would be. In there. And take a rag and I dab it. I don't wipe it. I dab it. I blot it. You can spread it out a little bit. Your blots. So it's not just right there. Dab, 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 dab away. Put a little bit on top of the flowers. In the flowers there. Inside them if you want to. You are creating what you like to see. Here. How do you like your grunge to spread? <laughs> While doing this. Alright, now we're going to go along. Since this ink is still drying a little bit over here, we're going to go to this side. Because this ink is oh, just about done. It's good. Alright. Again, all the way up on there. And any of the little areas that you may have missed. Okay. And I'll take my bag again and I blot. Blot, blot, blot. I don't write, I don't rub, I don't wipe, I blot. And if it gets too dark in certain areas, and that's when you can get it wet, get your rag wet. And um, lighten up a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing around where this transfer is over here. Add some dirt around that. I always put it around the bottom. Always around the bottom. Always around the handles. Always around the lip. And just blot, blot, blot. <laughs> Until it looks pleasing to your eye. If you have to go back with some of the gray paint that you have on here, you can do that too. stopped recording there but it stopped recording for a minute I'm still about where I was at I'm just going to continue to go around the edges and the edges and the edges and blot 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 your life away here you might even want to take some of this antique wax and just blot a little bit on top here so it's not such a stark contrast I mean dab I have very little on my brush and I'm just kind of blending it in a little bit all right now the same thing up here where we put this stamp at around the bottom Stamp here, grunge. Got to make it grungy a little bit. I'm just kind of barely hitting this, so I don't have to blot it too much because I don't know how set that ink is yet. Let's see, but I always go all the way around the rim. is your product right now if you're gonna keep it indoors um, I always seal it up always will seal it up if I'm gonna use it indoors it's polycrylic if I'm gonna put it outdoors I use a outdoor um, polyurethane I can't remember the name of it now it like green can I believe it's a green can I spray on it I don't have any right now I use the last of it and threw it away 
so I can't share that. But make sure indoor, you can use water-based. Outdoor, you'll have to use uh, an outdoor formula. But if you wanna continue this, you can take spray foam, fill up here, go get some flowers and shove them in. That's what I did with my big pot here. Or you can just leave it empty so you can sit whatever you want in it. You can even finish painting it out, you know, so it doesn't look so different. But this is the method of how to turn a flower pot or a cooking pot into a flower pot or a decorative piece. You can put this up on a top of a hutch even. It, I'm going to show you my other one. smaller one, but it's in the house, and I'm not going to go get it right now, but here's the other one I did. Same way. Same way. I just filled it full of foam. You can see inside there. And then I stuck some fall flowers in it, because I'm getting ready for fall. Next thing I'm, we're doing is fall. And that's how we do it, guys. So here it is, and whoop, try these for yourself, they're so easy, and these are cheap. The thing that takes the longest is waiting for things to dry, because with this you thoroughly have to wait for things to dry. And some people are having good luck, you know, cleaning everything with alcohol and making sure it's dry before they're painting it. I tried it and I didn't but it might be, you know, I have a lot of humidity around here right now and I'm working outside in the barn. So this is our pot. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back in a few days. I have another thrift haul, but then I'm going to start a series probably this next week. And I think I am doing a collab um, on the 9th. Um, thrifted item used as home decor. So come check it out. All right, you guys have a great day. Bye.